Marbury. There is a very... Beautiful piano. Maybe Mrs. Marbury likes to play in her free time. It looks like I found the real master of this house. There is no need to worry about the household cat. I'm sure that Mrs. Marbury lets it do what it pleases. How do you do? You must be Mr. Elkil Praro. Chief Inspector Chubb told me that you might be coming. Madame, you may be of valuable help to me. It would be my pleasure to help you. Will there be some journalists there as well? I think you might even be interviewed. You are a key witness. I've suspected him for some time, but he appeared so harmless. Oh yes, sometimes he got angry and waved his arms about. But even then, he wasn't frightening. And he was as gentle as a lamb again immediately afterwards. It was only this morning that I understood. He told me he was going to Cheltenham, but my daughter saw him at Euston Station. It's not the right station. To get to Cheltenham, you have to take the train from Paddington. And what's more, Mr. Cuss left behind an ABC with Doncaster underlined. As you can imagine, when I saw that, I called Scotland Yard. Well done. You were right. He did go to Doncaster. So I was right to warn the police. Uh, tell me, did you have any other reason to suspect Mr. Kirst? Well, he's odd. Sometimes he coughs really loudly and complains that his throat is burning, and sometimes he talks to himself and stares into space. He told me that it was because of a wound he got in the wall. His head hasn't been quite right since, he said. And then he was in Churston when that millionaire got murdered. I found his train ticket when I washed his coat. He didn't want me to wash his shirt. He washed it himself. But I did see big brown stains on it. Where were the stains on the shirt? On the collar and on the buttonholes. Cut used to travel for his work. Is that correct? Oh, it wasn't for pleasure. He was always on well on trains. But he had to sell his stockings around England. I have to respect my engagements, he used to say. Do you know where Kirst was at the time of the murder in Andover and Bexhill? On June the 21st and July the 25th? No, I don't know. That was a while ago, you know. But surely you keep a register. It won't do you much good. Mr. Kirst rents his room for the year. If he goes away for a few days, I have no reason to make a note of it. Ah! I remember one thing. Bexhill's by the sea, right? Indeed. It is a large seaside resort. Well, as it happens, at the start of July, Mr. Cast asked me to repair his bathing dress. Suspicious, huh? Very interesting. Please continue. I also forgot to say that he started buying newspapers that talked about the case. When did he start buying the newspapers? Let's see. I think it was just after the millionaire's murder in Churston. He didn't seem all that interested before that. That will be all for now. I'm going to take a look at his room. Take the key on the counter. I should check the register. Mrs. Marbury may have been hiding something from me. 
I don't think my register will help. The truth is becoming apparent, and I have something to say to Mrs. Marbury. This woman appears to be in a good mood. Mrs. Marbury is in a good mood. She is working very precisely in producing incredibly thin peel. Mrs. Marbury, if I am to believe the register, you rented room 306 to a certain Mr. Fishman on the day of the Bexil murder? Room 306 is Cust's room. Can you explain yourself? Yes, I remember. Just for one night as a favor, Mr. Cust was away, all my other rooms were taken, and poor Mr. Fishman had nowhere to go. It doesn't matter, provided that you remembered to change the sheets. Oh, do you think so? Laudanum Cameron's Chemists. Laudanum, a medicine for coughs. This subject would probably... Diethyl barbituric acid, Johnson Company. I know this medicine. It is a powerful sedative. This subject would probably be useful to me. How oh, hopeful. This place is a real mess. At least we can say that Mr. Cust is not very concerned about order and balance. It's an ABC. A long blade and knife, a murderer's weapon. This subject would probably be useful to me. Cast is parsimonious. He keeps his pencils and sharpens them until there is nothing left. It is clear that he did not grow up in luxury. I have to get the ribbon. How am I going to do it? The ribbon is jammed. I have to start by freeing it.
The left hand heel has been removed. The right hand heel has been removed. Something is blocking the ribbon. And here is the ribbon. Let us see if it was indeed used to write the letters sent by ABC. I only need the ink ribbon for my inquiry. I will let Jack clean the keyboard if he wishes. All the letters announcing the murders were written on Kirst's typewriter. Did Kirst drop it when he opened the window? Or was it Mrs. Marbury while she was cleaning? John Milligan, Managing Director, Silky Legs, Frederick Street, Leicester. To A.B. Kirst, Marbury's Guest House, 1935, May the 21st. Dear Sir, Further to our letters dated 5th and 10th of the month, we confirm we are you as door-to-door -door salesmen, according to the conditions stated in our previous letters. We will send you the articles by mail and also a Redfield typewriter you will be using for every business letter. Regarding the schedule of your rounds, please do as following. June 21. Andover. Arrive by train the 20th in the evening and get a room at Station Hotel. Start your turn in the north part of the town. This letter establishes that Cust went to Andover, but the ink has hidden the destinations of his other trips. <sighs> I know from Mrs. Marbury that he went to Churston. I just have to show that he went to Bexhill and I will have proof that he was present at all the crime scenes. It's closed. ABC guys, enough to sign about a dozen murders. This knife is very useful. Who knows, maybe it never cut anything other than string. Stockings. Trousers, white shirts, everything has been washed very well. The Bexhill Daily Paper, dated from the day of the Bexhill murder. Most probably the basting dress repaired by Mrs. Marbury's expert hands. All the main articles referring to the ABC case are here from the The register shows that Cust did not sleep at the guest house. It is not the right time.
the least we can say that Mr. Cust is not very concerned about order and balance. War of 1914-1918. By the King's order, the name of Corporal A.B. Cust, Devonshire Regiment, was published on the London Gazette on May the 10th, 1918, as mentioned in the Dispatch for Gallant and Distinguished Service. An army dispatch, wounded on the Somme front, victim of a gas attack, Corporal Cust greatly deserves his distinction. It is now the right time. ABC guys, enough to sign about a dozen murders. This dark stain, it could be blood, but goodness knows how long it has been there. No use continuing the inspection of this room. I've seen all there is to see. Goodbye, Mrs. Marbury. Thank you for your help. Bye. Ah, Chief Inspector. I was about to leave. Good evening, Chief Inspector. Welcome. Please excuse me, I must go to the kitchen. I'll leave the key of Mr. Cust on the counter. I'm sorry I'm late. I've spent ages with the Doncaster police. And you? I have established one fact. On three occasions, Cust was at the scene on the day of the crimes. I had best talk to Jap. I've listened closely to what you have to say, Poirot. For me, there's no doubt... That is what we're going to look for. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. The evidence against Cust is overwhelming. His presence at the scenes, the knife, the blood-stained shirt, the ABCs in a box. C'est vrai. However, the blood Mrs. Marbury saw on Cust's shirt may have been his own. According to his medical records, he suffers from hemoptysis. 
The murderer cut Sir Carmichael's throat from behind and the blood spurted outwards. You would expect the murderer's shirt to be stained on the sleeves, not on the buttonholes, yet we see quite the opposite. You would expect the murderer to keep the newspaper articles about his crimes. But Cust's collection starts in Cheston, as if it discovered the case rather late. Hmm, I agree it's troubling, but it doesn't change my mind. There's small details that we should be able to clear up by questioning Cust. When can you talk to him? Doncaster is sending him to us on the first train. Are they questioning him already? He says he can't remember a thing. It's plausible. Doctor Say suffers from absences and amnesia. Mrs. Marbury has confirmed this. He may have done the murders in an altered state. A familiar situation. It's not enough to clear his name. Dr. Thompson insisted that even if you don't know what you're doing, you never commit a murder without wanting to. Très intéressant. I shall remember that. Right. I'll go and examine the suspect's room. Chief Inspector, I took the liberty of removing a few clues to examine at home. All right. We'll discuss them tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm going to see if you've missed something.